Yeah, guys, every any any true weeb knows that like you struggle with that. The struggle <laughs> the with struggle. not knowing for sure if a fan service episode will pop up or not. There needs to be a disclaimer. Or it's like you're in the middle of like watching something and you're like, man, I have all this free time. I could watch this, but it's like I also risk <laughs> having people think I'm sitting here watching porn. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's like it's a struggle. Every true weeb knows that this is a struggle. <laughs> I know. Well, we were trying, uh, me and Gabe have been trying to get Taylor to <laughs> watch some really bad anime. Would you please share which animes? Patissier. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Why? Patissier. There's or... no reason. Well, you for know that. there are really bad animes out there, and like I don't know. I feel like you haven't truly delved into the world of anime until you've seen oh, a bad yeah. one. I was what last night. Um, Luke came over and we were watching. We went well. We were gonna watch Drifters, but we couldn't find that anywhere. So we started well. But then we we've been rolling a D twenty to determine what we're gonna watch next. And we rolled Mir and Nikki twice. But I was like, no, we can't watch that. We were gonna watch it with other people. So now we're watching Beyond the Boundary. That one's good. Yeah, and he was like, oh, I've already seen the first episode of this. And I was like, okay, cool. Like we'll watch. It. And he's like, yeah, this was not what I thought the show was. And he was thinking of some other like really trashy anime. And he's like, I've watched so much bad anime, it's not even funny anymore. And I'm like. You're a tr- only a true weeb has watched bad anime, mm-hmm. and I I'm proud to say that I've only seen a handful of bad anime, and it's mostly because of this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Mo. You're welcome. <laughs> there's School Days, which I kind of like a lot. Then there's Bonjour Pastoria, as you guys know, my riveting review over it. Uh, Earl and Fairy, um, Devil and Realist, I would even say was a bad anime. Yeah, I mean it's not it honestly like. Keep in mind, all three of those I watched in middle school. Yes, I am fully aware. My tastes have changed dramatically. Oh, and Yukai Rise, like Yo-kai Nora Rise, Rise of the Yoka Clan. <laughs> ugh, ugh. We were literally listening to like a video the other day. It was playing like openings, and then that one popped up. I was like, we Hoo-h. both literally go like, Hoo-h. I was like, ugh. <laughs> and then I added it to my mouth because I hadn't yet, and I was like, very bad. <laughs> very like, bad. A three. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Binger's Anime Edition. As always, I'm your host, Mo. And I'm Maddie, and we're just a little podcast that talks about different animes with fellow weebs out there. You went too far. It's okay. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so we're here. Um, Mo, I realized something. Okay, tell me. You know how we said we're going to do romance animes for the month of February? Yeah. You know what day Death Parade came out on? valentine's day no death parade came out on february 1st really yeah so we already screwed the pooch Uh, (gasps) it did oh my god so i literally was like huh well we tried and guess we don't know how to do dates guys so (laughs) i didn't even realize that (laughs) yep we're doing great everybody but <laughs> so, the black haired lady and Deckham get together. Yeah. So, alternate side story. <laughs> alternate. I mean, it's kind of a romance. It's a romance. Psychological yeah, so romance. Sorry, sorry, everyone. They're probably really confused when we talked about that on Monday. They're like, hmm, um, not quite. It is not February. It is already February. <laughs> we don't know how to do. So things. I guess we're just doing this week's episode and then we'll do another one next week and do our top 10 list and then call it good. I guess. Because trust me, I don't want to watch more romance. Uh, <laughs> There's some good ones out there. Like this yeah. one's pretty good. Yeah, I know you. You say that. You but little. Anyway, uh, so Mo, how's your life been this week? Any fun stories you'd like to share with our fans? Um, I went on a date oh. on Thursday. <gasps> you did. I did. Oh, oh, how did it go? I did. Um, it went. Shut up. <laughs> He's so perverted. Sorry. Um, I didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, but all of our Patreon viewers can totally see. <laughs> Ew. I'm not doing that again. Ew. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, um, but it was really cute. We went to the dog park. Aww. I took Milo for a yeah, while. Yeah, your stupid dog. Yeah. I don't like your dog. But it was kind of funny because <laughs> we were at the dog park and Carlos looks over at me and he goes, he's like, honestly, I didn't think that I would have like 
this much fun at a dog park, like <laughs> on my day off. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, are, are you saying you didn't think you'd have fun today? <laughs> and he was like, no, 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 that's not what I'm, he's like, I just meant that like, I didn't think that like going to a dog park would be this much fun. Aw, <laughs> that's kind of sweet. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> and then we took Milo back home, and then we went to eat at Joe's. I took him to Eskimo Joe's to eat. Yes, because it's a staple here in Stillwater. Well, he's never been, and you so know, you got to. It's not great. You got to. You got to take him once, like mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's fine. And um, then we went back home and we watched The Princess Bride. Oh, that's sweet. Until uh, he had to leave, and I had to leave because I had dance practice that night. Oh. That's but fine. it's okay because everything's fine. Tomorrow's his last day at work. Oh, and so he'll be able to come up more. Oh, that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. I'll get to see this man again. Yes, this man. It's man, but yes. Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, you learned how to play magic as well last week. I did. I finally, told I taught Mo, Mo how to. I have a mutual friend that actually wants to learn how to play, so we'll start doing that. Yes, I'm excited. Also, um. Ma, uh, Mo's old roommate Taylor is um, and I have like a little lunch thing we do on Tuesdays and we're going to start playing magic at the library yeah because we're total nerds and we have no shame we'll hide behind our little partition and just play magic behind it and all my fraternity brothers will be like what the hell are you doing I'll be like I have no shame do Dude, you know I don't what? have any shame anymore I, I sit there in the library and I watch anime oh same I literally am watching I mean I don't watch food wars at the library because <laughs> I don't want people to think I'm watching freaking hentai. Well, if I do, I go sit in a corner where nobody can see. <laughs> well, I had a friend of mine. This is funny. Um, <laughs> Food Wars, not hentai, because right. they don't watch hentai. Right. <laughs> but I had a friend of mine. He came up to me. He's like, yeah, I started watching Fire Force, and it was, like, super great and stuff. But, like, I was, like, watching the first two episodes, and, of course, I'm in the library watching it, and the bath scene comes up, and, like, someone walks up behind me, and they watch I think they think I'm watching freaking hentai. It's the only scene in the entire anime that is them bathing together and just, like, you know – and he's like, I'm watching freaking hentai. Oh, the when the <laughs> Yes. And I'm I like, you bro, I about. feel you because the whole thing at my internship this summer was quite unfortunate. Uh <laughs> you sitting there for you watching porn? <laughs> I was not watching porn at work, thank you. I was watching the Monogatari series, which is practically <laughs> porn at this point. But um uh, Oh, dude, I was watching a video the other day of like an orchestra playing the Pokemon theme song. Was that good or bad oh it was good oh it was so good because they were playing it and the people in the audience were singing the lyrics and it was like i i want to be the very best like no one ever was i love that opening mm. <laughs> to oh. catch them is my real test to train them is my cause. oh i like the hand motions <laughs> like i can tell your palm background was coming up oh yeah dude no. i love listening to orchestras playing music like um anime openings and stuff like mm-hmm. there's a lot that do neo genesis fan and, and vangelion's opening da, 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 yeah it's just good da, 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 da. i like watching marching bands playing it because i was a band kid in high school or i i just like watching a lot of like people at, like anime conventions and stuff like get out like their uh keyboard or something it's oh, yeah. playing like ones like on the keyboard demon slayer's opening demon slayer your lie see. in april Nor- naruto um, attack on titan yeah all naruto. the typical ones um no game, crossing no roads yeah yeah crossing fields crossing fields wow <laughs> fake fan <laughs> you're not a real lisa fan you're a fake lisa fan <laughs> yes Ugh. i am what oh my gosh <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh, remember when we were on YouTube and we wa- found that My Hero Academia like play or something or musical? Yes. Oh. I saw one for AOT the other day. It was so weird. The I need to find the AOT one now, but the My Hero one was like, they were like taking the music from High School Musical and changing the lyrics to it. And like, they were doing the dance and everything. I'm like, is this a high school made production? <laughs> but I still just love a Karashima. Their anime club. And ba- like Bakugo was just like, over dramatically aggressive the entire time and yeah. all might being trapped in the locker <laughs> that was like hilarious i was like whoa what was that <laughs> no and deku just crying all the time but literally the like aot one it's literally just a clip of them dancing to um you know the jason derulo song that's like 
I'm not funny, but you get on. Yeah, no, I have no idea. I'm uncultured. We've been. Oh, okay. That song, uh, uh, Talk Dirty to Me. And it's literally just all of the AOT members dancing to, like, Talk Dirty to Me. And they literally have it zoomed in with uh, Zoe Hange. Oh, my gosh. Freaking, she gets it down. Like, let me tell you, I was like, whoa. (laughs) You're like, what's happening? And Levi, too. Oh, I've seen some really cringy videos online, like, high school like clubs or something like dancing to it oh i like their high school rallies and stuff i'm like i love anime but i would never do that in front of my yeah like (laughs) i mean like yes like the demon slayer (laughs) yeah like yeah like i'm like i'm a fan but yeah i couldn't go in front of my school it's like i don't have any problem telling somebody that yeah i like anime i read manga and i'll talk about it i'll weep out with them But... but i'm not gonna perform I would never perform. But I already have major performance anxiety already, so, like... I feel that, like, at an anime convention, I totally would cosplay, though. Oh, yeah, same. But I wouldn't, like, perform in front of, like, my school Dude, with a bunch of normies. I want to cosplay so bad, but I have literally no character I want to cosplay as because all my favorite characters are female. And Ooh. I can't show up as Yuno Gasai at a convention. I mean, I could. I know two that I want to cosplay. Oh, okay. I've thought about okay. this quite a bit. Okay. Who? First one is Shinobu from Demon Slayer. Okay, I was thinking Shinobu from Monogatari series, no. and I was like, I've never you want to be a elementary school girl that's no. a 400-year vampire? No. Okay, good. Um, Shinobu from Demon Slayer. I love her. Which one's that? Is that the butterfly, butterfly. girl? Okay, okay, cool. The insect pillar. Yeah. That can't, like, cut the heads off. She can only, like, stab them with venom. Poison, yeah. Poison. And then... So she uh, just stabs and runs away? Yeah. <laughs> I That's me as a Demon Slayer. And then... uh. Mary from Kakiguri. Oh, I like the Mary one. That's a good one. Uh, I don't know which one I would do. I would do, I mean, I could be Yuki from Future Diary. That's a very easy cosplay to do, but I don't like Yuki. He's a whiny bitch. <laughs> um, oh, I know who I would cosplay. I would be cosplay as Carmen from Assassination Classroom. I love Carmen. Or my boy, Kirishima. Kirishima. <laughs> God, I couldn't take my shirt off though. So that would be, I would be so uncomfortable. No, listen, they actually have like suits. That, yeah, like, I'm not wearing that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I've been seeing, like, honestly, like, I'm on that side of TikTok where I've been seeing, like, a lot of them women are getting, like, these, like, chest suits with, like, latex. And, like, you put them on, it basically makes you look like you have a guy's chest. And um, it's, like, freaky because, like, all of a sudden they'll, like, be showing it. And then all of a sudden they'll, like, switch to, like, full cosplay. And I'm, like, Okay. Like, that's a little bit of a trap because you do look like a dude now. <laughs> like, you're like, I mean, you're like, okay, okay. I mean, and then guys do the opposite. They get, like, boobs. There's, like, chest pieces for, like, that. Yeah, I'll do that and I'll be, you know, at my convention. I would totally cosplay, But I do have though. a beard right now, so that would be unfor- that would be hard to pull, but uh, I'll have to shave. I would totally cosplay Inosuke, though. I'd get, like, one of those, like... A noose, a noose, oh, okay, a noose, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and Inosuke. just wear a hat, like a bear, a bull, a boar. Yeah, that'd be that would be an easy one to like pull off. But yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for us to cosplay as, let us know. I just as long cosplay. as it's you know appropriate for the most part. I mean, I I, I kind of will, I'll do anything really inappropriate, but like I just have to get the body for legally, like a cosplayer, yeah. you know, like yeah. Snatched waist, the big butt, like all that, you know. What? You, you ever see those like cosplayers? And, like I don't know, they just have really like tiny waists, and they have like you like big butts. Yeah, no, I, I actually am not really on cosplay TikTok or TikTok at all because I deleted I just, it. I just watch different okay. things. That's fair. That's fair. I like um, cosplay. I like to see the different cosplays, especially yeah. when they can pull them off really good. I understand. I'm trying to think. Do we have anything else we should talk about? I mean, you didn't ask how my week went. You didn't really ask how my week went. I literally asked, hey, how's your week been this week, Mo? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm out of Yeah, it. and you talked about your date, and then we talked about magic. How was your week? Thanks, Mo, for asking. It was actually pretty boring. I don't really have much to talk about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're such a dick. I'm just a petty. I'm just petty. You are fully aware of this. I need validation, okay? I need people to act like they care about my life. <laughs> Actually, I've been doing a lot of personal development. It's been going pretty well. I'm yeah. working on self-love and getting a validation of myself and not seeking for validation of my friends. Drinking also made margaritas. the big realization today that <laughs> I'm not anyone's counselor. 
even though I've said that before, but I now truly believe it because even if I say all the right things to someone, I'm still not going to fix them, you know? Like, mm-hmm. they have to fix themselves. And I can only do so much. I can be there and support them, but I can't fix someone. Yeah. Which is very hard for me to admit. It happens. It's fine. It's but, good. yeah, that's... You're doing yeah, great. Yeah, we're doing great. Should we start getting into the anime we're viewing? I think we should. Okay. Mo, you would like to introduce it? Yes. So, as we said last week, this week we are doing Fruit Basket, the shoujo manga romance. Slice of life. Yes. Sort of. Sort of. It's actually really good. I liked it. Yeah. I knew you were going to like it. I knew you would like the comedy in it. Yeah, the comedy is pretty good. But it was kind of still kind of... It's hard to binge for me. I can't really binge it. Yeah. But I was trying to. It was rough. But um, hence our podcast name is kind of difficult for me sometimes, bingers. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you want to do Proto? Mm-hmm. So Fruits Basket was directed by Yoshihide Itaba. This is the new one, not the old one. We're reviewing the 2019 one. Okay. okay <laughs> not the you. two. Th- thank you for clarification. <laughs> um, the music is by Masaru Yokoyama, who has done music in um, Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, Horny Mia, and Cirrus the Jaeger. Ew. I actually like Cirrus the Jaeger. Yeah. Me too. Um, the studio is TMS, who's done anime such as Glass Mask, Eat Sora Not Kiss, and Dr. Stone. Uh, the original run is April 6th of 2019 to the present, and it's got 50 episodes, whereas the, I think it's 2009 one, has 26 episodes. 2001. 2001? Okay. It was like About very eight long years time. off. Wait, there's a second season? Second season of the 2019 one. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think it's the first season, guys. That was a lot of episodes to try to watch. Not going to lie. Yeah, the 2019 one has 50 episodes because it's actually continuing on. Oh, cool. I'll finish it eventually and it i think we're getting like a third season too oh my well I'll, I'll i want to see all this stuff like realize like i know what happens and i just want to see them like finish it yeah i'll watch it but yeah that's the general fruit basket i'll do a synopsis my synopsis is kind of long so i'm going to try to make it shorter do your synopsis voice <clears throat> practicing for D D tonight <laughs> Toro Handu has always loved the Chinese whoa, Zodiac. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm guessing I didn't say that right, did I? <laughs> Toru Handu. <laughs> Is that not her name? It's Toru Honda. I was close. <laughs> Toru Honda has always loved the Chinese Zodiac. After a sudden family tragedy has left her living in a tent, <laughs> she happens to set up shop in a special plot of land that's owned by the very rich and prominent Soma family. After an unfortunate incident in a typhoon and a mudslide, she no longer has a tent to live in anymore, and the Soma family, desperate for a housewife, <laughs> offer her a place to live. And all seems normal, for the most part, living with two men. Three men. Three men in this house. And so one day, she gives a hug to one of the members of this family, and he turns into a cat. And, a mouse. and from this point on, he discovers all the secrets of the Soma family and that 13 members of the family have been possessed by one of the 13 Chinese Zodiac Zodiacs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and because they have been cursed. Because <laughs> they have been cursed. As we found out when I was talking to Mo about this, I thought it was a blessing at first. It's no, not a blessing. It's it is a, a curse. curse. And pretty much our story revolves around Toro Hondu. Honda? Toru? Toru. Honda. Honda. Di- discovering more about the Soma family over time and living with three men as well and a as house. falling in love. And then slowly falling in love with said three men. Actually, more like two of the men, but we're very confused on what she, her feelings are on the situation. Still trying to figure that one out. And her having to keep the Soma family secret at all costs. Yeah, that's pretty much... I would say that's pretty much the stop. That was a great... I, I kept that voice for a while yeah. there. Yeah. I'm kind of proud of myself. We're going to get a bunch of like messages being like, never do that again. <laughs> Why are you a DM for anything? If you get... What did you... Toru. Hondu. Hondu. <laughs> Hondu. Hondu. It's like Honda, like the car. Her name is like a car? Like, you know, the Honda cars? I thought they were Tokyo. Wait, Toyota. <laughs> You're thinking of Toyota. 
Guys, I don't know anything about cars. I just know that Bertha in my, my driveway right now is struggling half the time. Bertha's struggling. Bertha's struggling. Every time I drive now, like, I'll hit a bump and the lights turn on in my car. <laughs> and I'm like, that's cool. And then they kind of, like, slowly simmer out. And I'm like, that's probably not supposed to happen. Now, when I hit, I'm stopped and when my car goes, and I'm like, that's not good. That's fine. And I just keep driving. Okay. Anyway, Tara Hondu. <laughs> Oh, Tara Hondu. Tori, Tori Hondu. That's the English version. Tori Hondu. But yeah, that's pretty much the synopsis. Is there anything story-wise that I left out? I mean, it's literally just I mean, her. basically, it's just a, it's slice of life. Basically, her going around, finding out new things about each of the characters. And constantly bringing up her dead mom. Yes, This is Katara. literally Katara 2.0. I guess to, she came first before Katara, but like this was the inspiration for Katara because... Fucking Toru is constantly bringing up, oh, yes, Kyoko, my mother. She was just such a wonderful mother, and she would tell me this advice. I wonder what my mom would do. Oh, I forgot my picture of my mom in the mudslide. I must go get it. Oh, you took the picture of my mom? I can't go to work well, because I mean, this. if you think about it, Katara is, like, really bitter when it comes to her. She's like, my mom is dead. <laughs> <And> like <laughs> Sokka, you didn't love her mom as much as i did yeah or do you know like my mother was killed by a part of the fire nation you know and like but like tori she's like yeah my mom she was such a saint she was such a good mom you know but she's dead it's fine i love mom and everything's great and everyone's like she's so traumatized we must help her also all her friends are like uh she she acts like everything's fine we're there i'm like bitch why can't i have friends like this in my life i'm in like Toru is just like no I one mean, cares that much about their friends. And but basically, the story is just like her going around figuring out different things about each of the characters, and you know, meeting new members of the zodiac, and like getting involved with them, and like basically opening up a <laughs> getting whole involved with them. <laughs> Shut up! But I mean, just opening up a whole new world, not only for her, but for all of the other members because oh, they yeah. definitely have trauma. Yeah, all the members have problems because once again, it's a curse. There's no perks of being cursed by the Zodiacs, apparently. Except for they can erase memories, which is kind of nifty. I would Only love to... one character. Yeah, I would love to erase people's memories. Like, they all kind of have, like, a power. And plus, they can control, like, the animal of, like, their Zodiac, too. Yeah. Which is kind of weird, but... <laughs> yeah, the whole thing it's just, is just... like, freaking Yuki just calling all these rats. <laughs> all the time. He's the only one that does anything like yeah. that, other than the dogs and the cats and the rats. They just randomly show up. <laughs> but, yeah. It's fine. Anyway, that's the story. I mean, the story is, it's kind of a slice of life thing. There's not really, I mean, the general plot is just getting to know everyone. General plot, getting to know everyone, trying to open up, like, the hearts of the characters, I guess you would say. Yeah, I think so. So let's talk about the massive amount of characters in this anime. There's not as many as what I thought, but there's still a lot. Yeah. You want to start with the main character, whose name I can't say? Yeah, we'll start with Toru Honda. Um, Let's just, like do like a few points on these because yeah. there's just like a ton and, let's yeah, not and if spend there's a like a it. if there's a specific thing we want to talk about a character we can because i have a specific character i would like to talk about okay which you know exactly who i'm talking about i know uh so we're going to talk about toru honda toru honda is our main heroine mm-hmm. um she is not a member of the zodiac she is one of the only like outsiders of the soma family that actually know that the zodiac exists within the soma family yeah and so she's basically there she's like as I said, trying to open up the hearts of the yeah. characters and like, and she's just a very strange character because she just kind of accepted the fact these people turned into animals. She's like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry." I'm like, "Ah, oh, not how I would react." She's just a very like innocent character. Like, yeah, she very just sweet. Forgives everything. They and... call her Space Cadet all the time because she's always spacing out. She falls a lot. She's very sweet. She's very like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. It's all my." She's fault. like very like wants to help out everyone. Everything literally. And... Also, how the freak do you help? Okay. Because I'm a very help- caring person. I help people a lot. But, like, to the degree she is, it's not feasible. It's not possible. Well, and she's, like, also always wanting to help other people before she helps herself. Yeah. And, guys, that's not sustainable. Please don't do that. Trust me. It only ends in heartbreak and sorrow and a lot of tears. But, yeah. And then, so, basically, yeah, that's her story of. Yeah. And so, I will mention her two best friends real quick, which is. Utami and then Uatani. Yes, and Hanajima. Hanajima. Yep. And Uatami is pretty much like an old juvenile delinquent that Kyoko like helped. Ran around with her mother. Yeah, like 
her um pretty much like her mother um Toro's uh, mother was like, "Yo, I used to be part of that gang, you know. Like, it's okay like to the become the butterfly gang or something." Yeah, like she's like, "It's okay to like become straight laced and stuff." And so she helped Otama like fine become best friends with Toru until Kyoko died. Guys, if you couldn't figure it out, Kyoko Toro's oh, mom does dies. die. It's pretty obvious from the very beginning yeah. in the entire <laughs> anime. She's pretty cool. I like her. She's like tall and blonde, and she's like kind of like a badass, but she also is like. It's like the very opposite of, like, Toru. Yeah, but she's super, super caring of Toru. And then (laughs) Hanajima is one of my favorite characters, Wave Girl. She's like the psychic Wave Girl. Yeah, but she's like, she's like, I don't have spiritual abilities. I just pick up on the thoughts of people. And and everyone's like, ah, this is creepy. And she's like, I can tell that they have very friendly waves, but something's odd about them. Something mystical and spiritual. And she has the same voice actress as um, Nona from Death Parade. And so I'm like, this is weird. But she's super cool. I vibe with this girl a lot. I'm like, this isn't me if I was in this anime. And like, it's so funny because like one time they like actually came over for like a sleepover and both the two other main characters were like, watch out for that wave girl because she's really weird. She's almost picked up on us a couple times. They're like, you guys got to watch out. And she's just like, something's off here. A dog. And then Shigure's like, what? What? (laughs) She's like, what? A dog? (laughs) Oh, and cats. And they're like, we gotta go, bye. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, like, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's, let's go. <laughs> it's it's always a good time. So now we should probably get on to the two other main characters. Yes. So Kyo Soma and Yuki Soma. So yes. Kyo is the Zodiac of the cat. Yes, which is technically not one of the 12. It's the 13th and forgotten one, but it's not included in the banquet. Of the so Zodiac. like, and like the cat's like, if you know the story of the Chinese Zodiac, the cat got left out and because the rat told him the wrong day and so the mm-hmm, cat slept. Mm-hmm. And so the cat is kind of like the outcast of the Zodiac and how that normally works is the cat basically gets locked up in a storage unit for the rest of its life, you know. And the whole thing is that like the head of the family was saying that like, oh, if Kyo could beat Yuki, who is the rat um, in a fight, he can he doesn't have to go be put in the cat room. Yeah. And so. But he's the hard headed, like delinquent. Delinquent type. He gets very angry. He yells a lot. He's very stubborn. Yuki is the rat and he is very, he's the prince and he's very like. Elegant. Elegant and. and smart, really, straight yeah, laced. And like, he's a rat. Like, I remember texting you, and I was like, I'm sorry, but if she ends up with the rat, I'm going to be disgusted. Because... You thought she was going to end up with Oh, the yeah. Rat. I was like, this is disgusting. I, I'm like, I, which I guess this is weird, but like, I would never date someone that's possessed by the rat. <laughs> is that weird? She ends up with the cat. But... Yeah. Spoiler. <laughs> Plot twist. But, um, yeah, they're both, Yuki, they always fight. The two of them are constantly Well, fighting. it's like a rat and a cat, you yeah, know? Con- like Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Like, they're constantly fighting, and it's yeah. pretty funny. They're constantly just going back and forth to each other, yeah, trying to fight. Um, ha- Hanajima is one time is like, oh, you know, they're like the cat and the rat. And they're like, what? Like, you know, from the cartoon. And they're like, oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's just leave real quick. <laughs> There's, like, a whole bunch of, like, funny things that happen with, like, Hanajima and, like, each member of the Zodiac because she's like, oh, yeah, this. there's this. Or, like, oh, on the New Year's Eve day, it's, like, um, Haru is, like, Tora, not Toru. Haru. Toru is like, oh, I'm the first person I'm gonna have to call on the New Year is Hanajima, and then it pans to her, and then Hanajima just turns the camera. She's like, I'll be waiting, and just because like she breaks the <laughs> yes. whole fall because she knows, and she's just so creepy. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, so, so Shigure is next. Yes, he's the dog Zodiac. He's pretty it's like much, the older guardian. Yeah. So he's like he's a writer. So he has this like house that he lives at by himself, but. Now Yuki lives with him, and Kyo now lives with him, and now Toru. Toru lives with him. And he's kind of, like, they always make the joke that he's a dog, you know, like, he's a pervert, perverted dog, but he's, like, constantly, like, flirting with people and stuff. So. He does have, like, a perverted yes. personality. Yes, he does. He really loves high school girls. <laughs> yes, that is very And he loves true. flirting with women, too. Yeah. And um, he's just kind of creepy in general. But he is, like, the kind of, like, older one that's kind of, like, sort of guiding them mm-hmm, to where mm-hmm. the, like, the younger ones where they need to go. But he's also, like, <laughs> he doesn't know how to really be an adult. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, I, I think, and he's also, who's he voiced by? Michael Tatum, I think? No. Nope. I don't know who, but it's a very, like, 
prominent actor. Because all I can remember is like the like high school girls, high school girls. Yes, yes. Part, and like I just keep replaying that part like over and over in my head, and I can't, I can't think of who the voice actor is. I remember when Hisoka's voice actor showed up in this anime, and I was like, oh, yep, that's fitting. Yes. Yep. So, um, yes, he's very, he's an interesting character. Uh, next character is the Boar Zodiac. Which, do you want to introduce this character? Kagura. Our first female Zodiac. Yes. Uh, Kagura Soma. She is... She's like a year younger? Yeah. Or two? She's like a year or two younger than Toru and Kyo and Yuki. She's the boar Zodiac. And uh, she actually lives like on the... Uh, in the compound, like the Soma family has like a compound. And apparently they have like 138 members of the family. Which is like... I'm like, whoa. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's and a they all clan. live together. Which makes sense why they constantly are marrying people within the family. And I'm like, this is a yeah. lot of incest. Yeah. Um, and so she is the first female member. And we come to find out through her that actually um, the gender rule does not apply when um, you hug the opposite gender. They don't turn into... If they're both if they're, Zodiacs. Yeah, if they're yeah. both Zodiacs. Which I guess is convenient for Kyo who she's madly in love with. Yes. Whereas Kyo is not madly in love with her. No, he's in love with Toru, but just doesn't know it yet. Yes. And um, she will, Kakaguri will literally... Kagura. Kakura. I say Kakaguri. Yes. <laughs> Wrong anime, guys. Uh, she will go around and literally like, throw him around and through objects and break she everything. She is incredibly strong, but that's just because she is also the boar. Yeah, and she's super like... She's like, oh, Kyo, my Kyo. And then she's like... Don't denounce my love. And she was just like very around. like different personalities and yeah, stuff. Yeah, she's a little crazy. She's very much in love with and she's, she's willing to fight Toru for yeah, him. Yeah, she's low key yandere. I kinda get yandere vibes. It's a yeah. little sus, but not quite yandere. Not like mm-hmm. quite like Higarashi or like you know Gasai level, but like she kinda get in there. But um We yeah, can talk so... about Hatsuharu. Sure, we can skip to him real quick. He's one of my favorite characters. He's the bull zodiac. The, the, the ox, bull. The, the ox. ox. The yeah. ox. Even though he turns into a cow. There's a there's a thing to that, too. Oh, okay. But okay. I'm not going to tell it's you. It's funny because he's... um. It's kind of funny because he's always lost. I think that's the main reason why they did it is because he's a lost cow, which is... um. In... No, that's not why they did it. I, I know, but <laughs> it's funny that they have that because, you know, in Japanese folklore the lost cow you don't know this do you i do because i've been on a monogatari series the lost cow can't find where they're going no it's the snail it's the lost snail wrong wrong (laughs) wrong animal ignore me i was like what are you talking about yeah i just realized i used the wrong expression no but hatsuharu has split personality yes and it's just from childhood trauma yeah so there's dark dark haru who is like gangster and like very much in love with yuki no no i think the one that's in love with yuki is the normal one no it's the dark haru i thought the dark haru isn't I yeah i know the dark haru is always like uh like go out with yuki you know and like he well it's like yeah it's dark haru just trust me on this okay okay i'll just trust you on it and then like nice haru is just like, just like hi hi i'm here i want i'm your friend i was lost <laughs> i couldn't I, find my I way wandered to the around for three years <laughs> three years three days and now i'm here <laughs> and he's always trying to fight kyo yes um just because they have they're both trained in like martial arts and stuff and so they've always just had battles kyo has always won hatsuharu has never won yeah it's funny because hatsuharu oh there's that one scene with hatsuharu <laughs> Uh, my favorite the scene. iconic scene do you want to talk about this scene it's iconic yeah so uh this iconic scene um hatsuharu starts going to uh the three main characters school and of course like the members of the zodiac have unique hair colors based on their animals mm-hmm. and of course hatsuharu has black and white hair and the student council president believes that hatsuharu has dyed his hair and Hatsuha- and all of them are trying to explain, like, no, that's his natural hair color. He was born with it. And finally, it's like, all of a sudden, he switches to, like, Dark Haru. And he was like, he's like, unless you can prove that that's your natural hair color. And so uh, Haru just takes him into the bathroom. And the next thing you know, all you just hear is, like, 
Ah! And just you're screaming from the bathroom. And then he comes out, and all th- and like two Yuki and Kyo are like, he didn't. And they're like, he did. <laughs> and then they're like, he's like, yep, that is his natural hair color. And then uh, Taru's like, how did he prove it? And everyone's yeah. like, oh. We're not going to tell you. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we got to go. But it was uh, my favorite part was when the class president was walking down the aisle, and it was just like this weird walk. And he was just like, hello, friends. And then his like, la- his like, lackeys are behind him also doing this weird walk and the music was playing and I was yeah. just like what the freak is this he's like Vogan down the hallway Vogan down the hallway <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments but I, yeah that was a funny anime Hatsuharu is one of my favorite characters yeah um let's talk about Momenji next who is the rapid zodiac Momenji who's half German half Japanese and he looks like he is he's your lolly character yeah he's your he's like uh, who is Lowly. F- from Orin High School Host Club he's uh, uh, honey Honey, yes, honey, honey senpai. Honey mean 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 something. Yeah. Uh, I forget. Momiji. That was so a he's long time ago. he's kind of just there to really like force the characters into situations. Yeah, pretty much. But he's also kind of observant. He's like, "Oh, I don't understand." Like he's like, he has this like weird German accent. Oh, yeah, I know. Cuz okay, I thought compared he was to Swedish the 2001 anime, he doesn't have an accent. Oh. Like really? in the English dub, he does not have an accent. And the the 2019 they switched it up and they gave him a german accent and it like first time i ever heard it i was like what the fuck right <laughs> like <laughs> i completely understand like it was just kind of weird i thought it was swedish at first i was like what accent is this i'm like i'm not quite understanding what oh, you don't saying. understand I just, i'm like what is this and i was like this is so bad oh shoot i have to practice my accents now Good for dog. <laughs> but he never said that I'll feed the same. He's like, my, he said like some weird thing for mom. I'm like, what is he saying? He's like, my mama. And I'm like, why didn't you just say mama? I'm like, this is, doesn't make any sense. Because he's German. He's German. But Momoji, um, he's kind of got a troubled past. Too. Yeah, he's hy- also hyperactive. But he's yeah. very hyperactive, but his family basically just kind of abandoned him. Yeah, yeah. Because so one of the things that's revealed to the characters is that Whenever you're born with a possessed child of one of the animals, um, most mothers do one of two things. They either become extremely overprotective of their child or they denounce the child, which is what happened to Momiji. He was the latter. And so one of the other Zodiacs will come in, the one that can control memories, and pretty much wipe the memories of the everyone mother. that wants to forget about them. So a lot of, I think most of the Zodiacs, their parents have forgotten who they are, and um, which is quite sad. Except for a couple, because there's a couple in here that, you know, we meet. And... Yeah, but we meet their parents. But, yeah, a lot of them, I think they just have forgotten. And it's a curse. It's not a blessing to be a Zodiac. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's, like, really depressing because sometimes you'll see, like, Momiji, like, go up to, like, his family and stuff. And they're like, oh, hi, Momiji, you know, and, like, he doesn't remember. They yeah. don't remember at all who he is. It's sad. But, yeah, that's Momiji. Uh, the next one is Hatori. Who is Hattori. the sea horse, sea dragon, sea... Well, he's the dragon. Yes, but he turns into a... And there's a thing for that and why that happens. He turns into a sea dragon, which is fine. <laughs> he's uh, he's a doctor. He's very, like, your typical doctor, stern doctor, emotionalist. Like, he controls memories, you know, like, he's kind of just there. He's very, like, attached to the main house and very attached to, like, the head of the family yes who we should probably talk about akito akito he's a bitch i don't know what zodiac Akito's he a is female. she's a bitch <laughs> i thought it was a he sorry but um she what zodiac is she she's not a zodiac oh she's, she's considered just... like the god you know like how god like created the animals of the zodiac and invited them to yeah I didn't so it can that. in like if in, like, the story, she would be the god character because she's the head of the family. Wait, isn't there a chicken Zodiac? Mm-hmm. He's revealed in the second season. Oh, gotcha. I was like, we have never seen it. I know that the ram, ha- I've seen up to... I've seen... We still haven't seen the horse. We haven't seen... Uh... There's another one. The chicken, the... And there's one more. The horse, the chicken, and then the, another one. They're oh, gotcha. the ones we haven't seen yet. And they're in the second season. Gotcha. Okay, okay. But yeah, so very interesting. Uh, she she is literally a bitch. Uh, <laughs> well, she's just got this really bad complex of being alone, 
and she just like feels like when the members of the zodiac go off to do their own thing that they're abandoning her and that you know because she's considered the head of the family the god character that they should love her like unconditionally yeah she's kind of psycho and she does like a lot of things to the characters that are not great yeah like she basically causes hatori to go blind in one eye she horrifically abuses yuki as a child and same with hatori um one of the uh, the sheep one what's his name haru haru hati hoti hati h-o-t-i he's the little boy He's yeah, the yeah. The sheep. I don't remember uh, what his name was. Hot, but he hot pretty much, yeah. Some of the same similar things happened to her. There's also another zodiac that is the uh, the the tiger zodiac. That's Kisa. She becomes mute because of the bowling, but then she becomes unmute because our main heroine is just such a Toru. such a sweetheart. She also abuses Toru. Yeah, at the she, very end. Yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah, that makes sense. Because there's, like, a whole thing where finally, like... At the end of the first season? Mm-hmm. Okay. Finally, like, Toru gets to meet, like, Akito and stuff, and... Well, he already met. They already met. Oh, that school. scene's already happened. Oh, well, there's another team where they meet again. Oh. At the mansion, at oh, the no. Soma mansion, and she basically, like, beats down on Toru, and, like, pulling hair, and, like, you know, like, you don't deserve to, like... Does anyone, like, step in to help out? Well, like, you know, Shigure and everyone's like, stop. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know, like, you shouldn't be doing this and all that, you know, like. And then she probably is reminiscing on Kyoko in the moment and be like, what would my mom do in this moment? Or I I don't know. I think she's just like kind of in shock because I don't think she's ever been like handled that way. Yeah. You know, and so I, uh, yeah. Not great. Akito is not a very good character, but she also has like trauma from different things that even, like, her parents made her do because that's on. We'll figure that out later. But, but yeah, so I talked about the final Zodiac member we have met. That is my favorite character, Ayama. Ayame. The snake. Same thing. <laughs> I love this character. He's also played by Hisoka's voice actor, so you guys can already tell what type of character this is going to be. He's not a pedophile, but, like... He's, he's Yuki's older brother. Yeah, he's Yuki's older brother. He's very flamboyant, very outgoing. He's very eccentric mm-hmm. but my literally favorite scene of any anime is this one i watched yesterday i was at work and i was dying laughing because pretty much he's cl- they're talking about like high school stories and stuff and he's like oh yes when i was class president there was a couple boys that went to you know the pleasure district aka the red light district aka the prostitutes uh and like he's like so i had to st- step in and do something about it so at like the student meeting thing with the board and stuff he's like this is just a shame that we had like these adolescent sexual lust and stuff. Like, why are we punishing this? This is horrific. He's like, yes, it's not good to go to the pleasure district, but I, I can't stand for this. So how about everyone? Don't worry anymore for your adolescent teen lust. How about you direct it all to me instead? And yes, to me, I'll take on the burden of your lust. And, you know, since I'm a man, there's less fear of like bad things happening and stuff. He's like, and you might be wondering, am I a bottom or a top? And I am a bottom all the way. And he just like, <laughs> and everyone's just like dumped on like, what the freak just happened? And I was, he's very eccentric character. I was dying. I but was he's like, actually married. Is he really? Yeah, you know that like maid character that shows up. No, you haven't seen. No. Oh, she comes up in the second season. Never mind. But that's his wife. Oh, didn't know that. Yeah, he is married to a woman. I thought he was gay. No. (laughs) I I think everyone in this show is somewhat gay, but, like, I think everyone is portrayed as straight in the end. Yeah. Um, Him and, like, Shigure kind of have, like, a (laughs) bromance thing. A bromance thing. That goes on. I'm like, I'm uncomfortable with this. But also, like, there's definitely people I've talked to, like, that as jokes. And, you know, it's like, it's fine. But um, he's very eccentric, uh, dressmaker, you know, yes. <laughs> very kind of gay for a straight guy. <laughs> so it's sexuality is a spectrum. <laughs> it doesn't have to be black and white. You like what you like. No, you, that's right. <laughs> Mo's like, OK, sure. Anyway, that is most of the characters that we are talking about because I don't want to talk about any more. I think we kind of hit on all yeah. of them. So character development. Haru. I'm not Haru. Toro, Toru, 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 pretty much is the reason why any character develops in this show. Yeah, because she basically just kind of forces it out of them. Yeah, she's like, 
okay, I'm there for you. I'm your friend. And then everyone's like, oh my god, we love her. Well, she kind of like confronts. Well, she like forces the characters to like confront their like traumas and mm-hmm, stuff mm-hmm. and like really face them and act upon it. And, you know, because she's like, well, my mom would say this about this situation. And they're like, wow, your mom was such a wonderful woman. She's like, I know. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I miss geez. my mom. <laughs> yeah. And, and every time I'm just like, mm-hmm. but yeah, so. Or they're all just like falling in love with her. Yeah, you know? that's one true. of the two. I mean, but it is very cute. I will say it's cute. Um, let's talk about the visuals. Okay, compared to the 2001, compared to the 2019, the 2019 has exceptionally better visuals. Really? Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, 18 no. years difference. <laughs> well, Who no. would have known? Like I was kind of comparing that to the other day so like i watched one episode in the 2019 and then i went back and i watched it in 2001 and it was just like so much more like fluid yeah and because like when you take a scene from like the 2001 it's very choppy in the scenes because they can't like show the characters sometimes like turning the what some way or like you know how animation was like 20 years ago yeah not great and um Wow, actually, it's been 20 years. Shoot. <laughs> I feel Not old. even just 18. It's been 20 years fully. But, um, gosh. No, um, but the, uh, I love the animation from yeah, the Yeah, it's one. very bright. It's very pretty. It's very fluid. A lot of eyes, a lot of focus on the eyes, lights the hairs it, they do a very good job of pinpointing all those it's things it's very like even in like the character designs it's more of a modern look oh, to yeah. them because oh, yeah. like in the older one they had very like round faces mm-hmm. <laughs> for some reason i don't know why and then i don't know the eyes and like the older one like you were saying like the eyes were almost seemed dead in like the 2001 one just because, like, they didn't have, like, as much detail. Yeah, but now they, like, focus so much on those details, and I loved it. And also the way the characters will have the change in animation style, especially Toru, whenever she's freaking out, she'll just, like, start fluttering around, and, like, it's really funny, and, like, or, like, someone's like, oh, yes, and then their, their faces will change. Very similar to Your Line April, when they had, like, the sudden animation scene changes mm-hmm. during comedic moments well, and stuff. And- I think for this one, they had to do it justice because in 2001, Fruits Basket was a popular anime, like oh, yeah. super popular. Like it, it was known everywhere in the anime community. Mm-hmm. And so in 2019, when, well, before that, when they decided that they were going to do a reboot of Fruits Basket, they had to do it justice. Oh yeah. Or a whole bunch of people were going to get pissed. And they did good. They did good. They, they did it justice. And they brought back the original dub cast, even though the sub. Most of them. Most of them. But this, uh, the original Japanese dub they have uh, a completely new cast. Mm-hmm. But the English dub has the original, and everyone loves well, it. Well, because I didn't think that if they completely brought back a new cast, like they brought in a new cast, that nobody would want to watch it. Oh, yeah. Just because it's like, you, it's like even me hearing those, when I first watched the first episode, like in 2019, it was like I heard those familiar voices and stuff, and I was like, oh, nostalgia. You're like, and, like oh. Yeah, and, like, guys, the dub was really good. Like, I remember starting it, I was like, oh, this is a good dub. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's very few, like, a lot of anime's like, okay, I'll watch, and I'll be like, that's a cringy dub moment. Like, Haikyuu has a lot of cringy dub moments, especially with the random side characters. (laughs) Yeah. But in this anime, like, everyone is just, like, it's so fluid, it flows so well. Like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is so good. But you also have to think, though, too, that because that's because they've done this before. Yeah. And they've even actually like improved upon it from oh, like yeah. the two thousand one. And also the, the 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 girl that does the um the VA uh the the person that's in charge of the, the dub, I forget oh, yeah. what they're called, but she's also in it. Who is it? Um it's I think Taru's voice actress. She does a very good job at it. This I think it's Leah Clark maybe or it's I can't remember for sure, but she does a very good job. Anytime she's the VA director, I always mm-hmm. think it's very good um but yeah so sound uh the uh this original soundtrack was very fitting i wouldn't say it's anything like oh my gosh the fruit basket soundtrack is like the new madoka but i don't like, know i just i can't watch like the opening or anything just because i'm so yeah. used to the 2001 one and then they like i so thought that they were going to do like a rendition of 
the 2001 opening with I never this saw one. the 2001 opening. Well, then it doesn't probably bother you. But, like, I'm just so used to, like, the 2001 opening. And I was expecting that when I first watched this, and it just didn't happen. And I was like... I'm sorry you're disappointed. <sighs> I mean, I thought the openings were fitting. I thought they were okay. But it's I like, like the ending better for the first one, though. I like the se- second opening. I like the second opening. Because it's the like umbrellas. the one with the umbrella. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Um, but yeah, that's general. Uh, general thoughts. Um, guys, the comedy was really good in this anime. Like I, I, I told you a lot. Like I, I it's like on par with it. like Oron comedy. Yeah, it's it's very very it's very sweet too, and very like every character is different. So there's a lot of introspective introspective looks at things, and I mm-hmm. thought it was very. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. So um, I strongly recommend the anime. I do too. Like I will always recommend. Even I'm recommending the anime. And so oh. I know, I know. <laughs> You're like, I know I liked it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, so do you have any thoughts you'd like to talk about? I think we got them all. With- I had a question I was going to bring up. Okay, I have two questions. First okay. question. Which Chinese zodiac animal do you think each of us are? I'm the tiger. Really? Well, just because that's my zodiac anyway. Oh, uh- Okay, aren't we the same zodiac? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, I don't know. That's just who I've always thought that I would be. Who do you think I would be? I don't know. I I've just I I um let me think. Probably the tiger. <laughs> I forgot it. Yeah, or the rat. Or the rat. That came out wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Who do you think I would be? The cat? Me? Yeah. You uh, just kind of got that kind of personality. I don't know. Cool. I'm the main character, guys. <laughs> the cat or... Hmm. I could see you being like the sea dragon, too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> guys, two very different personalities. <laughs> As all my friends say, they can never figure out who I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's really my only question. I, I can't think of any other ones. It's fine. Um, I'll, would you ever be friends with any of these people? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I would be friends with, like, Toru's friend group. I could definitely see No, that. that's who I'm saying I would be friends oh, with. Yeah, because I, would... I think that would be such an awesome friend group. I'd be like, Wave Girl? I'll be Wave Girl. That's me. I, I'm Wave Girl. <laughs> I'm Wave Girl. <laughs> I'm Wave Girl. And you'll be the delinquent. Yes. That'd be funny. But, um, but yeah. And then Taylor can be the main character. Yes. That's our friend group right there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I guess that's our general thoughts and stuff. Uh, Let me do shameless plug. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Um, yeah, we are on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and TikTok. We are on Patreon, TikTok, and Instagram at Binger's Anime Edition, the podcast that you know and love. Go check it out. Yes, and please reach out to us, and we'd love to talk to you guys. And we are on Twitter at Anime Bingers. Yeah, and so we should do some music rets. You already know what my music record is. Oh, yeah, be. I do. What you, would you like to go first? Yeah. So this, uh, a couple days ago, actually, I watched The Given Movie. Oh, yes, For you the did. first time. And, ah! Was it that good? <laughs> it was so good. It focuses on the two ma- other characters in okay. the band, but I'm going to tell you. It was really good. It was really good. It was like the closure I needed. Okay. For, the, for everyone. I and support it. Um, their the new song in the the given band does is uh, Yoru Gakeru, which is basically Dawn Will Break. Okay, it's like a love song. I figured. Na, 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 na. Okay, I'll have to listen to it. I'm looking forward to watching the movie. No, and then like li- seriously, I went online and was looking up the singer for Mafia. Like the, the guy who voices Mafia, you watching him perform this song live and stuff, and I was like, oh, and he had actually like, he had Yuki's guitar. Oh my gosh! Yes, and then the guitarist um, had uh, Uyama's guitar, and like it was just like I was like, oh my gosh! Like <laughs> it's real life Mafia. You. <laughs> oh my word. We got a fan, guys. We got a fan. Listen, no, I've been obsessed with this song. I've been listening to it every single day since I watched The Given Movie. Oh, my word. You need to watch it. It's only an hour. I will watch it. Probably tomorrow. I'm very busy do tomorrow. It. I have a lot of homework to do tomorrow. Just watch it. 
I okay, fine, I'll find time. I'll skip church. Do it. Skip church. You <laughs> watch watch BL in me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my music rec. Um guys, didn't think about this, so I'm just gonna recommend the song to Beyond the Boundaries opening. Which I don't remember at all, but I'm sure it was great. <laughs> Is that okay. bad? <laughs> it was really pretty opening. So I'm going to be very honest. Opening. I've done that too multiple yeah. times. So Pugo Stray Dogs. <laughs> Pugo Stray Dogs opening three. <laughs> opening three. <laughs> I think there's a third opening. Guys, we're, we're running out of openings, so please recommend some to us. I've got a few that I can do. We're running out of songs. I know. But yeah, so thank you guys so much for listening. Oh, we have to figure out what we're reviewing next week. I've got a couple. Which ones are we reviewing? You, you, get, you shoot me a couple ideas. Okay, uh, Paradise Kiss, It's On A Night Kiss. Mm. Um, there's uh, Blue Spring Ride. Okay, which um, one is only 12 episodes? Blue Spring Ride. Is it good? Or my love story is a pretty good one too. That one's that one's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty animation. It's it's uh compared to like Eat Sword and I Kiss and Paradise Kiss, um my love or um no it's not called my love. I, I'll send it to you, but it's okay, guys. Join us next week when we review this anime. <laughs> uh, is there a dub? Yes. Good, because I'm so. watching it at work. Uh. I don't think so. If there's not, I have a couple more ideas. Cool. Can't wait. We don't know quite yet what we're doing, but we'll put it in the description what we're doing next week. Yeah. Sorry we're not as prepared. <laughs> it's been a rough week, guys. It was a rough week. But we'll be putting in the description what we do next week. So okay. stay tuned, and we'll talk to you guys next week all right guys thank you guys so much for joining all right guys stay binging and we'll talk to you next week bye bye